Our buddy Steve here is 1,000 blocks away from these diamonds. Now let me ask you a question. What is the best possible way Steve could reach these diamonds? Running? Riding a horse? Dolphins, maybe? Well, what if I told you, in modern day Minecraft, he could get to these diamonds in less than a second. But to understand how we got here, we need to see how Steve would have gotten to these diamonds when the game was first released in 2009. During the pre-classic phase, it was thought that simply walking was the only, in fact, fastest method of travel. This wasn't the case though, because by pressing R, you would quickly get sent into the air and be shot towards whatever direction you were facing sporadically. A pretty quick and weird form of travel, but it only gets more interesting from here. Once pre-classic was over, we moved into the classic phase, which surprisingly has yet another weird and quick travel method implemented into the game. By pressing R, you could save your current position, and then you could wander off to the other side of the map, and then press enter, and you'll instantly teleport back to the first position. You could even manipulate this feature to travel upwards by continuously jumping and teleporting, which will cause you to go higher up each reset. So these unique and quite efficient travel methods we've talked about so far have been pretty overkill, I'll admit. But as we move into the inf dev version of the game in 2010, the world becomes infinitely generated and traveling is going to become a much more tedious task. At least it was a tedious task until these blazing hot rod minecarts were added. Now I would say there's two versions of the minecart. You can use your average rails in minecart which will just barely get you up a two block ramp or you can use the new and extreme minecart booster track which basically gives you infinite travel momentum. By setting up a separate rail track with the minecart on it aligned next to your main rail track you can link together with the other minecart and it will as the name says boost you much further than you would without it. Okay cool so we have an efficient way to to travel across the world, but we still need a good method of getting into the mines or into a sky base. You have two options. A. Use ladders like a little bit, or B. Make a ginormous minecart elevator tower and spam right click to enter each minecart, which will get you to your destination in about five seconds. Hey, if you use an auto clicker, you can get there in about two. As we keep heading through the alpha version of the game, we'll continue to see new features being added. One very important update travel wise was the addition of boats, but just like minecarts, they were absolutely terrible. The steering makes me feel like I'm driving one of those toy coupe cars. Anyways, you can use them the traditional way, which is alright, or you can turn them into a working highway and elevator system. That's right, Ethos Lab decided to make a brilliant and advanced method of transportation using boats in an innovative way. It was built up of a series of water blocks spaced out by pressure plates and doors, which would propel your boat similar to the minecart booster track. He also took advantage of flowing water mechanics mechanics to make what seems like an elevator. This elaborate invention is what I'd say marks a turning point in player creativity, as from here on out, the community started to push the limits on how efficient and elaborate travel methods could be. Something else that was added during alpha was the nether, and one block traveled in the nether is eight in the overworld. So with any of these travel methods set up in the nether, you're going eight times faster than you would in the overworld. A bit of a more interesting travel method was created with the combination of minecart and boats. It's more of a glitch, but if you set up a small structure like this with a minecart in this spot, then place a bunch of boats behind it from underneath, once you enter the minecart and exit, the boats will fling you off into whatever direction you are facing pretty much instantly. The more boats you use, the further you will warp. Like in this clip, I used a few hundred boats and I warped across an entire lake. It's actually a pretty decent and convenient method of transportation. Only downside is the game can't process the absurd amount of boats there are, so it just lags a little bit. This next method of travel isn't actually a method of travel, but it's used to make it seem like you're traveling. This here is a classic anti-AFK pool made by looping a water source around a single block and then placing a sign next to the water. Entering it will endlessly push you around in a circular motion. Anti-AFK pools like this were extremely useful because it would prevent you from getting kicked for being inactive or AFK on multiplayer servers. You could let your mob farm or your cactus farm grind out loot for you while you go take a sh or something. Very useful. Alright, so most of these travel methods have been for players only, but but come on, we gotta give our animals some love. Using TNT, water, and the newly added redstone, you can create a TNT cannon and launch either a player or an animal into literal space. Some TNT cannons were as simple as one of these and others used roughly 70 pieces. Oh god, that is just brutal. You didn't have to shoot at like a 
a traditional cannon though, you could also launch yourself up horizontally by making a circular pull around you and lighting the TNT into the water. Not really the most safe way to travel, but I mean it works sometimes and it's great for parties. Once Alpha ended towards the end of 2010, Beta arrived. This is where we would continue to see redstone additions being used to make long distance travel more efficient. One of these revolutionary redstone inventions was called the piston bolt. Using pistons, redstone repeaters, and curving rails, you could place a minecart on the rails and activate the pistons, which will push the minecart you're in extremely quickly, one after one, like this. With the patching of minecart boosting, this was one of the fastest travel methods using minecarts. And while it does take a lot of resources to build, it's still a pretty neat form of traveling, and it's one of the fastest in the beta version of the game. Of course, when it comes to finding the best ways to travel, there's always going to be that one person who tries something completely random, and it somehow works. During the beta version of the game, if you were to open your computer's clock and set the dates back a day, and then put it to the actual dates, you suddenly turn Minecraft into speedrunning mode, and everything gets sped up by like 30 times. This was probably one of the most efficient, glitchy ways to travel that doesn't require a bunch of resources. But it's also extremely difficult to control, as tapping W once will send you to the far lands. Now for the rest of beta, which lasted all the way to November 2011, there wasn't much new travel methods found. We did get sprinting, horses, and some speed potions once 1.0 came out, but you know, that's that's boring. I wish I could fly like back in the old pre-classic days. Well, once 1.8 came out in 2014, slime blocks and other features were added that would spark the next revolutionary and insane method of traveling, flying machines. When putting a series of pistons, redstone, and slime blocks together, you can create a machine that will effortlessly float through the air, no matter how high off the ground you put it. The flying machine has to be one of the most attractive travel methods on this list so far, since it's quick, cost efficient, and you can use it while AFK. But of course, when such a revolutionary contraption is made, someone is going to have to pay the price. Not only could you create literal planes, but you could also use a duping method to drop infinite TNT down below and could wipe out an entire colony of villagers in just a few seconds. Oh god, I think I think Mojang actually got fed up with people making flying machines like this all the time, so they said, screw it, here's some wings, go fly into a tree or something. Oh. When most people today think of traveling with Elytra, they think of fireworks. But the firework feature was actually added a few years after the initial Elytra edition. So at first, people would shoot themselves with a punch bow to get a boost. No pain, no gain. Remember those terrible boats from earlier? Well, now they can be used to make the best traveling method in the entire game. Along with the elytras added in 1.9, boats were given good steering and better durability. But people decided, you know what? I still don't like using boats how they're supposed to be used. And that's when ice highways were invented. Players realized that boats traveled extremely quickly on ice, faster than in water, and making long highways with ice on them is one of the cheapest and quickest ways to travel. You can even do the opposite and light your boat on fire to have more airtime when falling. Now, although ice boats might be fast, it still looks like snail's pace compared to this next travel method. This absolute insane redstone invention called the Ender Pearl Cannon was created in version 1.12 on the Skycraft server. And it travels at just, just a measly 18,000 blocks per second. All possible with the physics of Ender Pearls and TNT. See, if you didn't know, Ender Pearl's trajectory can be changed with the explosion of TNT. With only one block, you barely see a change, but with several hundreds of TNT, like in this cannon, that Ender Pearl will teleport you thousands of blocks away instantly. This is just a prime example of how far players will push the game to its limit, especially when it comes to doing something as time consuming as traveling. Fast forward a couple years to 2018 when we enter version 1.14, where we would once again see an extremely unique and almost instant method of travel. Using the newly added Ravagers, you could take advantage of their gigantic knockback and warp thousands of blocks away instantly. Basically, you would set up a small contraption like this where the Ravager can't hit you, but can only deal knockback. Once it gets angry and decides to do its knockback attack, say goodbye to Earth, cause you just got launched to Mars. It's actually not a bad motive of transportation, but good luck capturing one of those things. Now moving into the present day version of Minecraft 1.16, we can still see the community finding creative and insane methods of travel. Using this next method, you can travel like one of those shark torpedoes you throw in the swimming pool. By combining the dolphin's grace effect, a track of soul soil, 
Depth Strider, and Soul Speed boots, you can shoot through the entire Pacific Ocean before you run out of breath. This is one of the only ways to travel efficiently by swimming in the game's history, and it just also happens to be one of the fastest traveling methods that you can do in modern day Minecraft. And that's that. It's quite a history, if I have to say. My girlfriend just said her dad isn't home, so I think I'm gonna go with the uh, fastest travel method of pressing R. Oh, oh, I'm here. Hey, honey, I'm here. Wait, wait, go. Steve!